What up, everyone? This is the Twice Over Movies Podcast, and I'm your host, Faraz. Today, we're taking a look at a very well-received, critically acclaimed film, Birdman, or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance. Make sure to be subscribed to the Twice Over Movies Podcast and check out our entire feed. We have done over 30 movies at this point, some you may have seen, heard of, or never even known about. So if you're ever wondering what movie to watch, you can get spoiler-free insights on every movie we have reviewed to see if it's for you or not. With our unique scoring of elements of a film, you can better understand your own tastes in movies and start noticing the things that make a movie special to you. Recent movies we have done include The Lives of Others, The Fountain, Crazy Stupid Love, and many others of course. To stay up to date and to suggest a movie to us to review, hit us up at the Twice Over on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook and we will take it into consideration. Okay, so today it's myself, Fahad, and Farhan for Birdman. Welcome everyone to the Twice Over Movies Podcast. This is your host Faraz. Today I'm here with Fahad and Farhan and we're discussing Birdman, a 2014 film. It's a movie about an actor that's been kind of typecasted into a superhero and he's trying to make a name for himself on Broadway. All right, Farhan, Fahad, what's up? What's good? What's going on? So Farhan selected this movie for me to review. So Farhan, why'd you select this movie? Why um, why, why would anyone choose this movie? Because it's very different. This is one of the movies I recommend to everybody because it is, it's like somewhat of a masterpiece oh. <laughs> uh, cinematically. Okay. It is. What, you don't agree with that? We'll, we'll, we'll get into it. it. All right, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. But I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy to think about the whole scope in this movie and the fact that this was shot in two months. The whole movie was shot in two months. That's impressive. In between other people's gigs. <laughs> and in the whole movie is 16 takes, if that. Wow. Is that is that factual? Like you looked it up and that's what you saw? Or is it something I you... I looked caught? it up. Oh, you looked it up. Okay. I was wondering how many it was. Yeah, I'm not clever enough to actually... Catch it. Break it down and catch it. Yeah. Because they do such, such subtle things. Mm-hmm. To change the take that it's not very perceptive. I mean, if you don't look yeah. closely, you will not you will not notice it. But I mean, I love this. Movie. I think we can all agree from a technical perspective, this movie was big achievement. Definitely, yeah. Oh yeah. Reminder: This is the review episode, so we're only reviewing it. No spoilers. We're giving our scores for the individual elements of the film. So let's start with writing. I gave it a seventy-five. I gave it a seventy. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm in an 85. I gave it the lowest score. I had a problem with the writing. Um, there was a lot of unnecessary exposition. Characters were spending too much time exp- either explaining their emotions or explaining what they were doing. And then the other reason why I gave it a lower score, a below average score, was it, the script or felt... Or just average. Too, yeah, the script felt kind of pompous. So I took marks off for that. It was... It regarded itself as Highbrow. important. And, yeah. <laughs> It, it didn't need to be. The story was simple. Yeah. Um, yeah. Farhan, you gave it an 85, right? Yeah, and I honestly debated giving it a 90. Um, here's the thing. I mean, we're talking about, I mean, dialogue combined with narrative, uh, narrational aspects. Is that a word? Half the things in this movie are quotable because it's just so, it's hilarious <laughs> from, you know, from a language perspective it's just like some of the stuff that they say is just it's just incredible and so like the dialogue is very natural and so i think some of the reasons that you had pointed out for why it seems like people are just kind of going on and on it's kind of because that's what's natural you know it's not it, that's just how people talk you know okay well i was gonna say i kind of agree more with fahad i guess my score is closer to his as well but it's what Fahad said, everyone's going on and on. I don't think that's natural because it fits for some characters. So like, for instance, everyone talks like the same in this movie to me. And whether it's Sam, who's played by Emma Stone, or Leslie, or Mike, Mike played by uh, Edward Norton, like that kind of dialogue, that kind of writing for those characters, it only made sense for Mike for me, but it didn't really like, fit in for the other characters. Really? Regan, though, he had his like distinct style with with the writing when it came to him but i didn't i felt like everyone else was just bucketed into one type of character and maybe maybe that was on purpose because they're all um actors in theater i don't know but yeah i mean that's i had a problem with that i don't see what you guys are seeing i guess because i saw each character being developed beautifully i mean jake 
played by Zach Galifianakis. Oh yeah, I didn't mention him for a reason. Completely <laughs> different from anybody. Yeah, he was good. As is even the chick that he's had, that actress that he's having um, that affair. I don't know if it's an affair, but the actress that he's having this thing with, you know, that fling with the brunette one. She's completely different than Leslie, the blonde one, who's completely different from Sam, who's completely different from Mike. And they all have a very, not, I mean, they're all very, very, very unique. Not from the and writing, it shows though. in their I don't dialogue. Think from the writing. I think it shows completely in their dialogue. <laughs> well, okay. We're, we're, I agree with you, Faraz. Their manner of speaking, it seems to be all from that, like, New York style of manner of speaking. Like, they're all, they're all professional actors. They all speak fast. They all speak in monologues to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, right. I mean, that's... Again, yeah, so I said maybe that says who they are in terms of their character. Anyway, yeah. again, let's move on to the next category. Let's go with the narrative. This obviously includes the direction and the story. I gave it a 90. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to differ from you guys a lot. I give it a 65. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm at an 85. Okay, yeah. I mean, I'm very close to you. I agree. Like, this, the yeah. director did a great job. Mm -hmm. I mean, aesthetically, we'll probably get into it. It's a pretty well-made, technically impressive movie. But, Fahad, why did you go with 65? You didn't like the direction? So the direction, I was fine with. And and that's a, sub, that's a component of narrative. But yeah. the narrative itself, the story, the, story. the plot, mm -hmm. it was... There was nothing. It was like bare bones. <laughs> It felt like an outline that had been adapted into a movie, but there was nothing that was really fleshed out. So, yeah, let me let me, let me explain a little bit more. The narrative thrust was kind of weak. It revolved around Riggin's character getting respect and adoration from the theater community. He already made a name for himself in Hollywood, and now he's trying to do the same in you know in, in this New York setting. And I didn't find that to be an interesting story by itself. And then there was a bunch of side plots that were okay. But it, it the narrative didn't work for me. I think you're giving a lot of weight to to the story and plot, which is fine. Yeah, if that's how you enjoy um, the movie. For me, this category for me this category is about more than that. It's about the delivery of that. You know, the way that it's the delivery of that, and the way that the the tone of the movie. You know, it's just, it's it's about how the um, how the director carries that tone throughout the different. Uh, I don't know what am I trying to say here. Pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's about pace. It's about tone. It's about setting the setting a mood for a certain scene the way it's supposed to be. You know, it's it's setting up scenes. It's setting up big moments. It's it's connection. It's like keeping audience engaged. So it's all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, so story plot is just a very small. Because I agree, it's simple and there's not a lot going so on. So you're talking about like execution from the director's perspective. The execution wasn't very flawed. It was pretty good. Uh, but the material chosen to be executed was very flawed. That's fair, guys. I mean, if you, if I had, if that's what you are um, looking for in a movie and it's it's not delivering on that aspect, then that's totally fair. I, I kind yeah. of am more on the far on side here because, yeah, the story, I mean, the story is kind of simple, but I, I think like a bad director would have just, it would have been a trash movie totally. Mm -hmm. So, like, the yeah. story might be, like, average, maybe, like, 70, 65, sure, but then... This would have been, like, a rom-com, you know? Yeah. The other part was, though, like, the delivery of all that was, like, a 90, 95, 100. So, like, somewhere in the middle, that's why I got my score at 90. Um, yeah. But I get it. I get where both of you guys are coming from. I, I can watch a movie about anything if it mm -hmm. is made... Uh, if it's executed well, uh, I will love You'll it. You'll enjoy it, yeah. You know? So... Yeah. But I can get you wanting a... Um, you know, a good story. And this isn't really a great story. Not at all. All right. So let's move on to the acting. I gave the acting 100. I gave the acting an 85. I was almost about to give it a 90. So I'm close there with you. Farron? I'm going to give it a 90. It's amazing for the most part. I'm teetering between 90 and 95. I'll stay with the 90 to keep things objective. Um, but there's tiny parts where I was kind of taken away from it. And I'm wondering why... There was this complete shift in character. On whose part? And so, Edward Norton's part. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought he was like my... Well, maybe him or Zach Galifianakis. Like oh, Zach Galifianakis is... <laughs> can we just agree that, that is, he's such an underrated actor, comedian, comedic actor, just yeah, he's overall? Pretty awesome. he's, he's, he's pretty good, but he, had, but he had a small part, right? He, had a, he, didn't, he came in like, what, a couple scenes? But he brought this crazy energy to the movie. Which was funny. So he, so during, this is a little trivia. During the movie, 
mm-hmm. because you know how there's long takes. So, like I said, there's uh, there, they said that there's 16 long scenes, right? There's long takes. The slightest semblance of a of a mishap, they have to start the whole thing over again. Mm-hmm. So Edward Norton and Michael Keaton were keeping tabs basically on who makes the most mistakes. Uh huh. Zach Galifianakis made the least oh. out of everybody. Uh, Emma Stone made the most. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but Zach Galifianakis is, is just, he was awesome. Yeah, honestly, I didn't have a single person that I wanted to critique. I mean, I'd like some more than others. Like, I like Edward Norton, Zach Galifianakis a little more than others. But I also didn't have anything real to critique, so I went with the 100. Fahad, you gave it the lowest score, right? Yeah. I thought the acting was good. Um I didn't find any scenes to be, like, amazing. Loud. Yeah. I wasn't blown away by anyone's acting. Okay. Regan Thompson, the main character, um, played by Michael Keaton, there were some moments where I found his acting to be, like, a little below the other actor's level. I don't know what it was. I guess it was all the quirky faces he was making, like, you know, the weird things, expressions he had <laughs> um, as he switched between, like, his um, normal self and his ego Self. There's some weird moments okay. there. All right. Um, let's go on to the aesthetics. So I went with an 85 here. All right. I gave it a 90. 100. 85. I thought you were going to say 100 for us. That's literally what you said the last time we talked about this movie. No, no, because, okay, it's. I, I weighted some of that in my narrative score, the, deli- the delivery okay, of okay, it. Okay. But that in itself is not so impressive to me. To be honest. So, like you said, it's 16 takes. This is, what, two-hour movie? It's, like, seven, eight-minute scenes. Like, it's not... So, that's 16... That's 16... I'm just dividing it by, like, average. That's 16 total, but if you were just... To, that's you knowing that now, you're like, okay, if I didn't tell you that, how many would you have seen? Even me knowing that, even me knowing that, I watched it again after knowing that, I don't know where these takes are coming. No, I mean, I don't know exactly when it's happening, but it's, I can assume when it's happening. Like, when they're close, like, me and Fahad talked about this for our 1917 episode. Like, when they move in really close and, like, get into the clothes of, like, someone or, like, their face, like, that's probably a cut somewhere there. If they're, obviously, for this movie, for Birdman, the, there's a couple times where the camera pans up to the sky and the day turns to night or night turns to day. Right, right. Um, and the other moments are like, it's just basically when they're in the hallways and they're like walking and it gets like super dark because they're turning a right, corner right, and there's yeah, no light. So there's yeah. probably cut there. I mean, I can't say I would have ever counted 16 or anything, but I'm just saying that I, mean, I gave it a good score of 85. I just didn't. So I think we're missing the point a little bit here when we're talking about the number of takes. We're missing like what exactly does that one um take illusion accomplish it, is yeah. there a con- additional continuity that's generated like one scene blends with the next and that, that's a good way to uh, frame it fahad because i gave the uh direction or the narrative such a high score because i felt like it was they did that one take thing without making it feel distracting at all but aesthetically also you guys remember uh-huh. we're including sound here i actually knocked yeah, it down exactly. at least five points for it's just sound because really I did, not like the sound. did you find it Dude, too heavy I hate, no i just or, uh yes some moments but i hate it when a movie goes loud to quiet to loud so like drastically i get it now this is riggins character on stage when he's playing whoever he's playing on in his play he goes from like whispering to like yelling and he's like mumbling. I, I hate when it's like that, man. Like it just bothers me. I want I want to be able to hear what the character is saying. I don't want it to be too loud randomly. I don't want it to be too quiet randomly. I want it to be within a range that makes sense. So I did not get a little bit for that. I'm just curious. How how did you um, listen to the audio of this movie? Were you wearing headphones or? Wearing headphones. Gotcha. I feel like when I wear headphones, I noticed... Like the little things in sound a little more because obviously, yeah, like you're totally engulfed in it. I literally didn't get any of that. I watched it on my my TV and I watched it on headphones. I mean, I, I have no, I didn't get any semblance of like, oh, the sound, the sound balance is weird. Yeah, not at all. Okay. <laughs> I, so I don't, I don't exactly know where that's coming from. But here's what I look at when I'm looking. And I'm I'm reading off of our kind of how we've laid out the score. Aesthetics mm-hmm. is how immersive the visual and audio audio experience was. Is it pleasant mm-hmm. to see in here? Is there purposeful use? It's not distracting. It's consistent. This is all of those things, and it's all of those things at a hundred percent. 
Explain the purposeful use part. That's, I think, what Fahad's question is. Purposeful use of... Of the one shot. Of the Continuity, visual. right? Of the one... Oh, of the, how, like, why is the one... Why are they using the one shot thing yeah. for this movie? Yeah. It does... It does... I mean, it just does, like... I, there's so many different things it does, okay? One of the things, it kind of creates, like, a... It creates this environment of, like, urgency. It adds yeah. a lot of... I mean, it adds suspension because the camera is not one. It's not still, and it's not only just that it's just on a um, what's the word I'm looking for? for like steady cam dolly? dolly. It's not just on a dolly. It's not just on a steady cam. The, van the camera visibly, it's not steady, and it's moving, like it's it's, sh it's a little jittery. It's a little, you know what I mean? It, they do that. It's frantic. They do that purposefully at certain points in the movie. I don't yeah. know if you guys caught that stuff, and it, and there's um, and you're following you're 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 trying to see how hectic it is to make this Broadway play, you know it, you just get so many different senses. I mean I mean I, maybe we can go into it a little bit more in our uh, analysis in the discussion, but I mean there is definitely a purposeful use for it, and it's not just that it's I mean even if it's not even if it's not the most purposeful thing, it's freaking impressive. It's so impressive, and to do that all in two months is insane. To me, this is this is the best. This is the best movie in terms of aesthetically. This is the best movie that I can think of. You know, there are other movies that come close, and I maybe I'm just a sucker for that kind of thing. But I just when I look for a movie, I want to see none of the process, and I don't see any of the process in here. You know what I mean? Editing included. Me and Fahad both gave 1917 aesthetics a hundred. Ooh, and I have yet to watch that movie, and I'm. And I I'm think I do think it, it is better than this. In a war movie, it's. It I'll made probably it give a that a hundred too. You would definitely, you would. Um, yeah. I gave it for Birds of Passage as well, and for Life of Pi. We get, we get. It's a pretty strong movie for aesthetics. If you are into this stuff, you'll enjoy this movie. Obviously. Yeah, from a technical standpoint, this movie was a masterpiece. All right, uh, let's go on yeah. to themes. I give it a seventy-five. I gave it an 80. Yeah, I'm at an 80. Uh, and maybe even a 75, to be honest with you. I'm at a 75. Let's just call it a 75. I mean, there's the cool The cool part about it is the, the director plays on a lot of real-world stuff in this movie. That's really the only reason I am rating this high. It is pompous in terms of, like, you have to kind of dig to find true thematic elements. You know, but Birdman is basically, it's, 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 uh, it's an analog to, to Batman. Michael Keaton or, played yeah. Batman. Yeah. When you know in the '90s, and he's never done. He's done basically nothing since. And so it's just interesting to cast him in this role. Edward Norton is cast as this character who's hard to like, is impossible to work with as an actor. And that's, and that's what true the in reputation real life. That he yeah. has. That he's hard to work exactly. with. Exactly. So I don't even know if you factor that into theme, but I kind of did. I don't know why. I did too, because it creates like it creates irony, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was gonna say. I, I mean, I'm a clear hater of superhero movies, so it was like refreshing to see that. But I realized how like pompous that is, right? Sometimes because people. I mean, you just want that sometimes. But yeah, I guess the only themes I really wrote down were admiration. Like Regan is like obsessed with it. He that's what he's that's his whole purpose now is to get admiration for being an actor beyond just uh, playing Birdman when he was younger. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I really didn't get much validation. I guess it's the same thing, um, to be loved and to be validated for what you do. Yeah, in fact, that's one of the major quotes of the movie. The movie opens with that. That's actually that's a that's a quote on Raymond Carver's grave. What do you aspire to, or something like that? It's to be loved and and, and admired, or something like that. And uh, what did you get? Did you get what you wanted in life? And did you get what you wanted in this life? Even so. Something like that. Yep. And he says, I did. And it's like, and what, what is it you wanted to be loved and admired or something like that, right? Anyways, that's the kind of the whole thing. I mean, you're right. Mm -hmm. And he also has like a quote like on his, I guess, window or no, mirror in his dressing room. A thing is not, yeah, the thing one. What does it say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, a thing is a thing, not what is said of that thing. Yeah. So I guess like, you know, he's been... Again, like typecast into being just Birdman. And this is another reason why I'm, I'm rating this lower than I usually would. I hate when movies try to be so ambiguous and try to make audiences be like, whoa, was this what happened or is this what happened? Oh, are you talking about the ending? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and not just the ending. Kind of all, if they didn't do the ending, I, I think they would have been better. Yeah. If they had yeah. a different ending. If they yeah. play with it throughout the movie, fine. You know, everybody tries to be like Guillermo del Toro in that respect. <laughs> 
And uh, I think people just need to stop. Yeah, especially when it feels totally unnecessary. Like, it doesn't add to the movie in any way. It, besides for it just being a little controversial, and that's it. Yeah, I think it's just to make it doesn't some need buzz. it. It's it's kind of like it's it's, it's you're whoring the movie out. That's what I. Yeah. That's kind of my thing. <laughs> All right, so that does it for our reviews. Fahad is actually the most critical of this movie, and his tally comes out to a seventy-eight. Mine's uh, at an eighty-six. All right. And Farhan, you're at eighty-nine. So me and Farhan are very close in terms of how we like this movie. So I like this movie on the first time I watched it. Um, this time I was, I was pretty critical of it um, just because a lot of the innovative stuff kind of had worn out. So mm. I, I, it didn't compensate for the, um, you know, the lack of the story. That's the main problem I had with it. So that's our review episode, everyone. Uh, check in next week for our discussion that will include spoilers. If you haven't seen this movie, watch it in between. Thanks for listening to this production of The Twice Over. If you haven't already, subscribe and follow wherever you get your podcast. And remember to support us on Patreon or by sharing the podcast with a friend. Feel free to contact us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at The Twice Over. Or email us at comments at thetwiceover.com. All of the music you heard is from Amerigo Gasway. Check him out on Bandcamp and Spotify.